Hello everybody and welcome back to Ballincraig Estate. So today's episode is going to be extremely busy. I know I say this at the beginning of pretty much every episode, but uh, yeah, today in particular is going to be bonkers. So <laughs> what we're going to do is we're going to first of all sell this tanker. We're actually going to sell the tractor as well, but not straight away. First of all, I just want to do the tanker. Now there is a reason for this. Uh, the reason for it is basically we're going to be replacing this tanker with something much bigger. I'm still going to be fairly cautious with the size of it because I know the yard is very tight, but I really do need to have something a bit bigger to be able to cater to the 200 animals and growing that we have. Uh, so I think we're probably going to go for a Joskin. Not this one, obviously, <laughs> because we're selling it, but one which is uh, just much larger. Like I say, the reason for not selling the tractor just yet is basically because we're going to replace it with the 390, the Massey Ferguson, and I don't think, although it's a very capable tractor, I don't think it will actually be capable of pulling the new tanker because the new tanker is absolutely massive if I can find it. Why have I clicked on baling technology? I mean animals. <laughs> right, so it is a choice of two basically. We can go for this one here or we can go for this one here. I think I'm going to go for the Joskin. I am fully aware of the size of the thing. It's absolutely massive. And yeah, it might be tricky to get around the yard. If it becomes a chore, we'll downgrade to this one here. It's about three times bigger, the Joskin. Um, but as we have so many animals, it would be nice to have it. And I've never used it before, so I'd, I'd love to have it, basically. So to be able to fund this, what we're going to have to do is drop the front loader off. We're going to replace it anyway, like I say, with the Massey Ferguson 390, which has been a very highly requested tractor for this map. And I love the idea. So, yeah, although we're going to be a bit short of money temporarily, very soon, we're going to have loads. So, yeah, let's just buy this. Ooh, different designs. Colour. I think I'll stick with standard. I'm sorry. I'm just a boring person. I always go for standard. Yeah, so, yeah, as predicted, that is massive. It's not going to actually be used on this tractor. This is just to get it back to the yard. Um, as we knew already, um, yeah, the 390 was just not really likely going to be able to pull it. Although, you're probably going to tell me now that the 390 is actually more powerful so the T5 is 117 horsepower, and the 390 is, let me just see here, 90 horsepower. Oh, phew, I got away with it for once. Whew, that was lucky. So yeah, we're going to drop it off. I should think, well, I know that one of the case tractors will be pulling this. It is gigantic, and no doubt I'm going to get bombarded with comments saying, oh, that is just too big for the map and stuff. I already knew before I bought it that it was this size. I actually looked at the pictures and stuff in great detail and I could see the size difference between the tractor pulling it and the tanker itself. It might be a bit too big actually, for, I mean scale wise, as in um, compared to real life, unless it actually is this big. I don't know, but it is 32,000 litre capacity which is massive, so yeah it can't be too far off. It is wider than one side of the road though, so maybe it is a bit out of scale? I'm not sure. You see, I could be wrong here. All I want to do is get it safely back to the yard and really give it a go in the yard. I want to see if we can actually manoeuvre it easily. I think the wheels stay. Yes, they do. So, effectively, that is going to make life much better, much easier than if it wasn't. I mean, if that wasn't, if it, if it didn't steer, I think it would have been just totally inappropriate for the farm. It wouldn't have worked. Actually, to be fair, looking at that coming up the track, it doesn't look too big. Please feel free to disagree, but I think it's alright. But I've said many crazy things in the past anyway, so I think I can get away with that comment. Yeah, it's actually really easy to manoeuvre around here. Brilliant stuff. So, yeah, we're going to go and buy the 390 with a front loader. Uh, we need to have the front loader, which partners here. Hopefully it doesn't roll away, that would be awful. <laughs> Just see the tanker rolling through the hedge down there. Uh, and yeah, this strategy is probably going to be worth quite a bit of money. I think it said something like, a hundred and, did it say £117,000? Wishful thinking. It said 60. But it actually is more than 60, because uh, we get the 20% extra if we take it to the store, which is what we're going to do. So, yeah, so that's all good. 
We need to also buy, and this is something we can tow back now, the Trailed Forager. Now I've actually had a really good think about the Trailed Forager. It's between three, and it's three which I really like, and I wish I could use all three, because I like all three. It's a tough situation to be in, because you kind of look like you've chosen one over the others, but at the end of the day I can only go for one. It is between the Lely, the Massey Ferguson, and a John Deere. The Massey Ferguson, I think, is absolutely brilliant, but the reason why I'm not going to buy it is because I don't know if it can actually reach a massive trailer. Because the Forager itself isn't very big, and the trailer is huge. So that's my reason for not buying the Massey Ferguson. The mod itself is very good. The Lely is a tough one. Oh, look, 72,361. Nice. The Lely is a tough one, and I might still go for it. It's by CD Models. I know it's good. I've used it before. I've done a mod review on it. Um, let me just see if I can find it. It'll be in the shop. Uh, bear with me. Forages? Would it come into Forages? Yeah, it should do. Yeah. The Lely Storm. There's the Massey Ferguson. And we've got the John Deere just here. The John Deere is the only one here which I haven't tested. So I'm, I'm going to go for the John Deere. If I don't like it, if it's faulty, I'm going to go for the Lely. Because I know that Lely is absolutely perfect. So it's really just to have a variety of different things. I've used the Lely before, which is why I'm going for the John Deere. If I don't like it, I'm going back. So that's basically how this is going to work. We'll buy it first. In fact, I'll take a look at it first as well. Okay, it looks all right. Textures are a little off. I th are they off? It's just a bit bitty, I suppose. I think it's been converted. It looks all right, actually. Yeah, that looks good. If it all works, I'll keep it, because, it, yeah, it looks like a decent mod. Now, let's see if we have enough money left over for the 390T with a front-loader attacher. Hopefully, we do. We need to buy the front-loader as well. Uh, it's going to be for four-wheel drive. So, we're looking at, basically, I think, wide tires with fender. So many different options, it's fantastic. I, I suppose actually standard is probably four wheel drive. And yeah, we'll go for, I like the high line. You see the problem? We're out of money. So this isn't any kind of realistic series. We're gonna go slightly more crazy with the money than we would do. Um, it's not like I am restricted at all. It's just I'm not gonna go crazy adding in too much money. Right, so yeah, we'll put it back to standard. Sorry to mess it around here. Highline, that looks amazing. Let's just make sure it still looks amazing when I see it. Oh yes. So I hope I've chosen the right one here. This was a very highly requested mod. Um, yeah, and I can see why. It, it looks very nice. I've actually used it on the multiplayer series last Saturday, and it went down very well, understandably. So. Yeah, I hope that the Massey Ferguson front loaders are compatible with the standard, uh, although we might get some of our own here anyway. We have to get the 880 for this one, which isn't a problem. We have the trailer for the grass, so yeah, that's all very good. So the priority, for now, is going to be to make sure the animals have water. Then we're going to move on and we're going to do the grass. Did I not choose the front loader bracket? That's better. Right, so let's get this attached and we'll take it over to the farm. Actually, I think this tractor would be perfect, you know, for running this uh, forager. It really shouldn't take much power. Uh, but yeah, we need to get it all rowed up after doing the animal work. Is it possible to put that in anymore? It's fairly offset. Let's just see. I would have thought so, because I think if we press X, it's actually going to put it further out. Yes, it is. So we just have to be careful, basically. Very, very careful. We'll put the beacon on. That should sort it out. With the beacon on, we're indestructible. Mm, it's not sticking over too far, but obviously, yeah, we need to be very vigilant of the oncoming traffic. We are doing silage, so, yeah, we don't need to have any kind of pallet forks or bale spikes. For the time being, I'm going to put it over here just roughly parked up. 
because uh, yeah, we're gonna really focus on these cows and the sheep. Let's grab, where is my, there it is. Ah, yes, I know I must do this, I know. I don't do it very often, but we're gonna have a wash. Let's put the pressure washer here. Not a bad place for it. And we'll give this thing a hose down. Because I agree, it is looking a little bit on the dirty side. It is going to get mucky again because it's going to have loads of work very soon. Um, but yeah, not really any excuses for having it looking like this. It's a little bit beyond this, I would say. It's looking much better already. Okay, so that should do nicely. It would be nice actually if we could have like another option for the pressure washers, maybe a cheaper one as well. Because although, yep, they are worth that in real life, they're extremely expensive, those big commercial pressure washers. Um, yeah, if we wanted to just have something smaller, almost like a household one actually, uh, yeah, that would be nice. Because you don't always have like, what is it, four and a half thousand pounds to spare. In fact, very rarely we have four and a half thousand pounds to spare. Now that scaling actually looks very good. So I don't think it is too far off if it is off at all. As for water, uh, I need to think of where to get it from. There must be a fill point. I've probably been to it already. This happens in every series. It won't be far away. Okay, so probably not what you're expecting to see. What we have here is the other water tanker, which I have changed two uh, because we had to <laughs> get into the water trigger which was fairly hard to reverse into with the other Joskin. Now this one you can do it with and it's actually fairly simple. It's on the limit I would say of what you can get through there um, but yeah I think what's happened here is I'm just pushing the map too far. It's not the sort of size machinery that was intended to be used. Sorry cow you didn't have to climb the tractor. Uh, so yeah I have kind of yeah, taken the wrong approach for that. However, uh, I would say there's a few things about the map which might need to be changed. Obviously, they don't have to be. But the thing which struck me as unusual, let's say, is the gate here. It's 90 degrees to this gate. So even getting just a tractor through here might be tricky. Um, unless it's vintage, like I say, a very small tractor. That probably is not the designated way into the field especially for any kind of machine. That could just be for people or for a very small vehicle. Um, so yeah, I'm definitely not saying change it because the intended way is probably this gate up here, which we have actually got through no problem at all. Um, but yeah, if you know what I mean, it's it's kind of hard to get into the, the mind of the author of any map because they will know why a gate is in a certain position, what the intended use is for a gate, but then when you come to play the map and you're new to it, you probably don't know what the author was thinking for a certain positioning of a gate. And then you go and use it thinking it's the proper one for the job. But then it turns out to be a nightmare to get through. So the 90 degree one down there would be, I would say, almost impossible to get through with this. This is pretty long. Um, and because there is a gate up there, I would say that the idea behind this one is just to let the cows out or maybe just to walk through, like I say. Because um, yeah, getting this through would have been quite a chore, and I would say impossible. So yeah, it's, it's very interesting to try and get into the mind of an author when a, a map is created. Uh, I would definitely say that what I'm using here though is too big. I think I've taken it to the next level. Anyway, the sheep have been done, I've already done them off screen. Uh, we've just done the cows, as you've just seen, so we're now going to move on. We're going to move on from this. Let's just see exactly what we did do. Water. So, yeah, the cows ideally have to have two full loads. We'll do that next time. They've got plenty for today, which is fantastic. They're going to have no problems at all with water. Where am I going with this thing? Let's just see where it takes me. Over here? Okay, we'll put it on the end. <laughs> Let's just put it here. Um... Yeah, hopefully it doesn't roll away. That is kind of a stupid place to put it, but still, it seems to have a parking brake. Let's get things rode up. 
let's move on to the real task of today. Whew. Yep, <laughs> we've done the water. Uh, if you don't know where the water trigger is, actually, I will just tell you. It's basically where we got the Joskin one from in the first place. It is, that is the giveaway. That kind of shows you where it is. There's no arrow or sign saying, look, here is the water. Um, it's just, yeah, you've just got to use common sense to figure it out, I suppose. I will, I will walk over there just to show you. Because when you are new to a map, it can be tricky to find it. And yeah, like I said, um, or as I demonstrated, I didn't know where it was to begin with. But it didn't take me that long to find. <laughs> I think I got away with that comment. Yes, it's just over here. There it is. It's that barrel at the end. So, yeah, your tank will be parked here anyway. So you traverse up to it. And you can uh, get watering. You get your water into the water troughs. So now we should have freed up the windrower. I think this tractor's going to be powerful enough. It certainly should be. It's 90 horsepower or something. I guess the model number is the giveaway. Come on, pull away from the wall. It is going to be nice to use this tractor though. It's a pack which is obviously very nice and yeah, as so many people have requested it for the map, I couldn't really turn down the opportunity to use it. So I'm not actually looking for any way in particular of doing this, I just want to basically row it up. So I think we'll probably go around the headlands a few times and then we'll go up and down the field. It usually works, it's very effective. Um, we do have to be quite careful though, because yeah, we need to have enough space either side for the uh, the follow me tractor to go. Because we have to side load, I think. We certainly do with the Lely. We have to side load. The John Deere might not be quite as particular. I'm not too sure. We might try and tow it. We might try and tow the trailer. Uh, but the good thing is, it's a big field. Lots of space out here. So even if I don't leave that much space, we should be alright. So we'll just get this done first of all, and then the fun really will begin. That really is one nice tractor. Really capable. It didn't struggle at all then. Uh, right, so we're going to put this back into the shed. That's looking much better in the field. I'm, I'm never that straight with the lines, but still. It's, um, it's going to be doable. We'll be able to pick it all up. So the trailer is around the corner. We need to pull it around. Uh, one thing we're definitely not going to do is tow the big trailer with this tractor. I think it probably would struggle with that, because the trailer which we have is massive. There is only one concern now, and that is that if the trailer will actually fit into the silage pit, because it is enclosed. I'm going to try it before we start, so that would be the wisest thing to do. So there we go, that's that done. Let's now move on. We'll grab a different tractor. Which tractor should we use as the main tractor here? I think that one over there might be a bit too big. I think we'll probably go for this one here. I need to put the mowers somewhere. I'm not too sure where. The issue is the rear mower has to be unfolded. Uh, probably one of the sheds out here, actually. If there's space... Okay, there isn't space. I didn't leave enough. We could do it getting some more storage. In that case, I'll just put them over here. There's the front mower. And we'll just put the other one in front of it for the time being. We will put some more sheds up. We're going to do the bees as well. Very soon. In fact, yeah, the bees will likely be in this field. Just here. 
There we go. So yeah, hopefully this does have enough power. Because it's not just pulling the trailer, it's also powering the forager. Providing we can do that. The reason why I'm checking this out is because somebody told me in the comments in a previous video uh, that it wouldn't fit. And I think the only way it wouldn't fit is when it's tipping, which is kind of vital. So really we should have one which has got like a walking floor. The only solution is if we can actually tip it outside and push it in with a buck rake or something. Yeah. We're going to have to tip it about here. That is what we'll have to do. Unless we can get around the back. You see, we could, technically, if we can get it around here, put it here, tip it here maybe, and then push it in. I don't know. It's a, it's a tricky one. In fact, what we might do is span this over two episodes so I can have a bit of input in between. I'm thinking, possibly, hiring in a JCB wheel loader with a buck rake. It seems like an obvious thing to do. We'll just call them contractors. Uh, has it got a tow bar? It does. Yeah, we should be able to tow it then. And it should be able to reach into there. The good thing is, the trailer is massive, so we shouldn't be unloading too often. I suppose really it's the kind of thing we'd be doing in multiplayer normally. Because while we're still out in the field, somebody else would be pushing the grass up talking about grass, some of this needs to be given to the sheep and possibly to the cows as well, because they are actually lacking grass completely. I think they have none. Does that fit? Is it going to fit on there? It won't necessarily. I need to make sure it's aligned. Oh, it does do. I don't know why I'm quite so surprised, because I, I was really expecting you to. I can't see any issues so far. That's going to fit. Hey, it looks good. It's looking very good. Right. Get it unfolded. Hopefully. Maybe I should go around the other way, but yeah, hopefully it is going to work. Right. Yes, that is working. Good. Fantastic. Have I got my lights on? I shouldn't. Let's, uh, yeah, we'll get them off. So far, so good. It's looking very promising indeed. Oh, it's stopped. Any reason for stopping? Uh, <laughs> why is it stopped? Why must you do this? Okay. Now it's working again. Bizarre. Very strange. Maybe it got confused. That is another really good use of the concrete pad. It means we can drop the trailer off on the hard standing so it's not going to sink in when it's full. Very, very good. Um, yeah, and also that went really well, surprisingly well, because I thought at the beginning there was something wrong. Um, but it, it seems that once it's started, it's absolutely fine. It just has to start. So 26,750 litres. How exactly we're going to tip it, yeah, that's to be decided, but uh, yeah, it shouldn't be too hard. I think we're probably going to have to push it in. Um, so we'll have to get the contractors in for that. It's not an issue. I'm going to try first, though. I'll try it myself. Obviously, I know that we can't reverse it into there and expect a tip it, because I don't think it's going to clear the roof. Although it is a fairly high roof. and It's not going to clear it, though. No, it won't clear that. Um, tell you what, I wish I hadn't planted this field. Uh, what I'll do is try and reverse. Uh, should I try? I think I'm going to have to jump cut because otherwise it's going to be a load of fail. Um, I was going to say I'll try and reverse up around here, but it doesn't look 
very likely with this setup. Again, I'm pretty sure it was designed this yard for some very small equipment. I'm just pushing it to a new level. Although, there might be some progress being made here. I don't know the best way of doing it. I want to really tip from the front. I think we'll just tip it on the concrete and push it in. That would be the best thing to do. I'm kind of hugging the wall. Just about clearing it. My, my tyres are hitting it. Yeah, this is uh, clutching at straws. See, the thing is, I'm up, but we don't really want to be up here anyway. Hmm. Um. Yeah, this is why I want a bit of input. That must be so heavy. Right, okay, so I'm going to tip it in front. It may or may not be the right decision. And then we're going to fill the trailer once more today. Once it's full, we'll keep it in the trailer until the next episode. I thought I was going to make that. I almost made it. We'll put it just here. Let's make a right mess. If I don't move too much, it hopefully it won't go everywhere, but if I don't move, it's going to go underneath things, which will be even worse. Okay, that, that, that that's quite a bit. Oh, no. Oh, dear. I think things have gone fairly pear-shaped. It's alright though, we can drive over that with the JCB. And that's the height of the trailer, fully tipped, and yes, it's taller than the barn. So that is lucky that we didn't try and empty it in there. Although I could have emptied it in stages, I suppose. There will be a solution to this. So although it looks bad, uh, yeah, it won't be. Let's get another full load, which will probably be most of the field. Well, we just about got it all in. Perfect, really. Ooh, a pallet fork. Uh, yeah, so what we've managed to get there is over 50,000 litres, which is far better than I was expecting. As I said, we're going to keep it here. Um, there's absolutely no point tipping even more to make an even bigger mess. It looks awful. Um, but yeah, as soon as we get the butt rake in there, it's going to scoop it up. I mean, I mean, the butt rake's capacity is probably more than this pile just here, this end of the pile. Obviously not the whole pile. Um, so we should be able to pick that up, then drive over here, put it into there, get the rest of it, should be dead easy. So that'll be the job for the next episode. And yeah, if you've got any more suggestions, please do let me know. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again very soon. Bye for now.